my talk will be in English, I'm afraid, first one of the day. But I know some of you have been sitting for quite some time, so what I'd like you to do is, if everybody can just stand up, and what I want you to do is introduce yourself to the person either side of you, please. Stand up. Okay, normally I would make everybody turn around. So turn around. Okay, 360. Okay, back to the stage. Thank you. You can sit down now. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Milton Haig, and I'm the head coach of the Georgian uh, national rugby team. And today I'm going to thank you. <laughs> Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about high-performing teams, and uh, in my opinion, I've, I spent 15 years in the corporate world before I became a professional coach, and in my opinion, uh, what you do in business, there are some absolute similarities, synergies in sport, and vice versa. So what we do in sport, uh, there's absolutely some uh, takeover that you can have in business, and today I just want to take you through a couple of things. Uh, like that. I've got 15 minutes and I've already wasted one. Okay, so uh, it might be a little bit like speed dating. So hang on to your seats as we take this journey. Right, that's a, that, that's a, just a two and a half minute clip of a high performance team and, um, and again that's your team, that's your national rugby team so you should f feel very proud. But in terms of what makes a high performance team and how can, we, um, how can we take some of those things that we do in sport or business and cross them over to be successful. So here's a couple of things I think um, that might be helpful. Mm. There we go. First one, vision. 
You would have heard this before, certainly uh, the majority of in this room would have absolutely understood this word, vision. But what does it really, really mean? And what it means is that uh, your company, or in my case, our team, must have real clear objectives or goals that we need to achieve. Uh, in 2015, World Cup, it was to be the most successful Georgian team that had ever prepared or gone to a World Cup, and we achieved our goal. So, for in order you to achieve these goals, it has to be not only top down, that's me as the head of the organisation, to my players, but it also has to be agreed upon by the bottom up. And that means whoever's uh, cleaning, cleaning the, the toilets in your company, they need to understand what our vision is. And again, vision, or how we're going to do things, has to be has to be able to be seen on a daily basis, or if not a daily basis, on a regular basis. Because again, everybody needs to understand what it is and how we're going to get there. Oh, that's backwards. Down, Milton. Okay. This means getting good, high-class people on board. Okay, in my case, looking for coaches who have the similar philosophy than I do, not necessarily the same techniques, because we don't want to be all the same. But certainly, we need to have people who are leading our organisations that have a similar mindset in terms of what you want to achieve. Again, this is uh, very important, obviously, for my, my environment, but also for yours. This is about culture. So what does culture mean? If you belong to a sports team, you'll understand everybody talks about having a really good culture. In business, it's also very, very important that you've got a very good culture. But what does it mean? Well, it simply means this is what we do. When you walk through our doors, in my training centre where the players arrive every day, your business, wherever it may be, when you walk through the doors, this is how we behave. This is the language we use, this is our actions we, we, uh, we do every day. But again, it's more about behaviour. And top class coaches are constantly trying to make sure that this, uh, this is improved. Again, our thoughts, our language, our communication to others. Very important. Okay, so building your culture and making sure that you have a really good culture, first class culture is really, really important. Uh, don't worry about the writing or anything. You'll get access to this uh, through HR Hub once, once, uh, once you leave here today, so uh, <laughs> the speed dating will be a little bit slower for you. People, processes and systems. Okay, what's that about? Um, in any good organisation, we need to absolutely understand that at any given moment, where are we? Are we successful? Are we behind? Are we ahead? And... By having this, uh, this system or this process to be able to gauge if we're doing well, it's very important because we want to celebrate that with our staff, with our players, with our coaches. But alternatively, or in the reverse, we also want to know when we're not doing so well so that we can make a change quickly and that it become, doesn't become terminal in terms of a business, as well as, as for me as well. So having these systems and processes to be able to identify these situations at any given moment, really, really important. It's a mashuka, not yellow, but... <laughs> what does this mean? Right people on the bus, wrong people off the bus, and the right people in the right seats. I like this. This is uh, something that I've learned to absolutely believe in over my 25 years of being in corporate and, and professional coaching. First thing you've got to do, recruit well, get the right people. Second thing you've got to do is make sure you get rid of the ones who aren't contributing positively to your company or my team or my organisation. Get rid of them because they're like a cancer and they will spread and they will cost you. The next thing you've really got to do is make sure that you put the right people in the right seat, which means right people in the right job. Okay? What are their skill sets? What should they be doing in our company or our team? And again, if you think about this, 
uh, for all of our businesses, whether you're a, a two-man business or whether you're a multinational organisation, it doesn't really matter. In the long run, what we're trying to do is get the right people into our company, into our organisations, and then we're going to give them the right role that suits their skill sets. So, next time you think about this, just think of the Mashuka. Communicate expectations clearly. And there's another slide just after this that will reinforce what we're doing. So, once we get people into our company, in, into our organisation, into our environment, it is really important whether they're, if you're the CEO of the company and you've got a senior manager starting, or whether you've just hired, your HR has just hired a janitor, or a cleaner, sorry. You must make sure that the expectation of their performance is communicated clearly right from the start. And I've been caught with this, probably as some of you have been in the audience, I've been caught with this before, where I just assume that they know how we perform and what we do here. And it's ended up coming around and biting me in the behind. Okay, so really important that you communicate ex expectations. And along with that is our job descriptions. Again, I think in corporate world, I think that this is something we can still improve on. I really do. I think our job descriptions must have clear uh, roles and responsibilities of who you are employing, as it is with our team. When I hire coaches, I specifically hire them to do a job. But I make sure that on my job description, it says that. And it's clear. And again, if he's got questions, he can ask me about it, or we can, I can ask him if he understands it. But again, those two things, I think, um, when I looked at this presentation, again, last night, I think, um, I thought they, they, they actually do go hand in hand. So communicate expectation clearly, but also let's make sure that our job descriptions, our JDs, are really clear as well. Five minutes left. How am I going? Okay, the music will start playing soon, so when the music starts playing, I'm, I'm out of here. So, performance feedback. In our high performance environment, and certainly in all professional sports around the world, performance feedback is really, really important. How do we, how do we then relate that to business? You're in the performance environment. Believe me, your company needs to perform, because if they don't, guess what? You're out of a job, okay? So, performance feedback is about, in my situation, if a player doesn't play very well during a game or when we review it, the next day I always do a review with the team about how our performance was and we rate it, players rate it, then I'll rate it, and we discuss it. If that player hasn't, or player A hasn't played very well, then we will set him aside and we'll spend some time during the week telling him what we think he needs to improve on. Okay? On the other side of the coin, if somebody played really well, we spend just as much time telling him what he did really well. And again, think about it in your business. A lot of the times we catch people doing things wrong and we re-emphasize it and we're telling them, you shouldn't be doing that, shouldn't be doing that, shouldn't be doing that. But how many times do we actually catch people doing things right and reinforcing that they did do right? And again, so have a system around your performance feedback. Make sure it's clear and open. Make sure that they have just as much opportunity to talk to you about what you're doing as they do, as you do for them. Okay, it's very important. I know it's very difficult because as managers, well, as, as you know, CEOs of the company, we don't like hearing certain things, but again, I can tell you that if you have an open and clear process, it will help your business. And then what we're looking for is continuous improvement. Okay, so once we've done our review, once we've had our discussion with our employee or employees, how do we get better? We're always, in our team, in our environment, we're always looking for a 5% increase, always. Sometimes they come in, come in at half time. If you've watched uh, games of rugby here, folks, if you've been to Dynamo Stadium or, or um, locomotive, you will see a difference in half time. Sometimes they come out and they play better. That's because 
I've been, uh, yes, <laughs> I've been talking to them about how we can improve. Not just yelling at them and screaming at them, but I'm telling them specifically, this is what we can do. Give me 5% more in this area. Give me 5% more in this area. And we'll have a good chance of winning this game. And it works. And again, no use telling them I need them to be 100% better because 100% is re unrealistic. When you talk about continuous improvement, talk in, talk in minimal numbers. Because minimal numbers are achievable for most people. I'm not sure if uh, the audience might be a bit too young to do, have done this. Cans, piece of string, one person's on one end, the other person's on the other, and you can talk to each other. Certainly in my day, that's how we made fun. We didn't have phones and computers and all that sort of stuff. But what does that mean? That means have a really good communication system. Working in silos will kill you. What does that mean? So, groups of people in the same company in one area. And over here, it could be in a different building, there's another group of uh, people in the same company working here. Do they ever communicate to each other? I guarantee you, a lot of the time they don't. We have people in our organisation exactly that. We don't communicate because we're not in the same building. We have people, well, we used to have people within the building not even talking to each other. So now with technology, effectively we can communicate, boom, boom, we use WhatsApp, everybody's on the group, whether it's just the management or whether it's the players or whether it's everybody, bang, there's a text, you need to be here at this time. Or, this isn't going well boys, we need to make sure that we improve this tomorrow. Okay, instant feedback, really good. Especially if you're going downwards and you want it to, to right the ship, instant feedback. Instant communication is really, really important, but make sure that it's not just wasting words. Make sure that it means something. Okay, I know that's easy to say, but if you've got something to say, make sure it's gonna count, because why waste your energy otherwise? So, have a really good communication system. Just remember, silos kill businesses, okay? What do you think that means? Okay, that's it. Well done. Teamwork. Teamwork is absolutely critical. There is no individual bigger than the team. We absolutely need that. And, and again, uh, we can have individuals, but they must understand that the team comes first. If you have too many individuals, they will revert during pressure under pressure, they will revert to their old habits and they'll play for themselves, or they'll only do things for themselves in your business. So make sure if they're good for the business, turn them around and make them, make them, don't tell them, yes, we want your individuality, no problem. But you need to be team first before individual. Okay, so music starting. Here we go. Okay, so what I want to say to you is that most people in this room will be leaders. Hands up if you're a leader. Hands up if you're a leader, you have some people. Okay, wrong. Everybody, put your hand up. You are a leader. Okay, and the only reason I'm saying that is because regardless of whether you are, uh, you have 100 people underneath you or whether you have two, or whether you're, the two, you're, the, you're one of the two people that we report to, we report to somebody, you're still a leader by your behaviour and your actions, by your passion and your purpose, you will lead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.